So we went by the man now. When I reach almost to the gate, the man says, stop, 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 stop. And he blast two back to rum. And then he said, if you walk back where come in, and I walk back where come in, one run like a fish tank and some pretty, pretty something. And anyways, now, we have a ball, the crystal ball, the brown thing. Yeah, and it's kind of heavy. And he said, if I open out my hand, I open out my hand, and I put it, and he put it in my hand. When he put it in my hand, I pay a fire him see now. Him said, Jesus. Um, and him said, give me 10 minutes. Anyway, so I'm going to play a story. People always reach out to me and I share some real life experience. So, I could just have Daniel on one side of my mind and I could listen to where the lady has been through. She's living in the state now, but she said, Damien, I watch your program. It inspired me to come out and speak. So, I could drive and listen what she went through. And trust me, guys, this one. I said this one is very interested. We could listen. Okay, good afternoon. I just want to share this story. It's a true life experience story. You see, I want to let people know that God, God is real and he's here for each and every one of us and for every action there's a reaction in this story it begins 18 years ago it happened and uh, i was pregnant and i was a, a hairdresser at the time i do nails too on the street side that's in Linstead and I was living with my baby daddy and uh, we had uh, two children at the time I was pregnant he had other outside children and uh, like when it comes to holidays they would uh, come spend time with us. And then we would get them together and they would go back, you know. But the story begins like this. I got a dream that God was coming for his world and the rain was falling, but it was fire that was actually falling and I was locking down some people in a container and um, my, my, my baby daddy his son which is not my son he didn't want to in the vision he didn't want to come out the fire so my baby daddy was out there trying to pull him inside However, he was trying to manage his father. So I said to God in the vision, I say, God, if I go help him, will you let the fire burn me? And he said, stretch out your hand. And I stretch out my hand in the vision and the fire fall and it came right down on my hand. And when I look at my hand, I see that my hand wasn't burned. So I ran out and I help him and I pulled the two of them inside and lock it down. After getting that vision, after getting that vision, about um, about two weeks, about two weeks after that, my stepdaughter, she had came to visit me. And while she was there, I had to go on the road, because I, always have to be in the streets doing my thing and I got on the road and while I was there my neighbor called me and he said miss your child steal some money from my room I say really yeah so I tell him not to curse her but just hold it down until I reach home the evening so however while i was there 
maybe an hour or so at ran half and he called me again and he say miss you know your child set my bed on fire i was like what i said did she do that i said did you see he said no but when he was going through the passage he see her walking down the passage i say oh lord man i say god what is this no so i just get fed up pack up my stuff and then i say i go home all right so i went home so it was a big hall area because this is a tenement yard like you know bunches of people live upstairs downstairs and whatever so when i reach home now we was there discussing what was going on and stuff so i say to her go on the top floor and pick up the clothes from the house top and bring them inside for me and so she did and when she was walking past me my my body run different you know and i gone i gone in the room behind her and when she put the clothes in the city chair all the clothes just catch a fire and i scream out one of the man running and then they run out and they get some bucket with water and they hold the, water, the fire and the fire start um creating havoc the fire start running on the curtain right in front of my eyes you know I start feeling scared and I start praying. And then the people in the apartments, they come together and they call other churches and other churches come and pray. Even at one instant, one church come there and they prayed. And when they prayed, the fire start burning right in front of them. And you know, I'm saying this because I wasn't a person who believed in supernatural power like Obi. I, I wasn't a person who believed in those things. I always believed that my God will protect me from whatever, you know? I, I, I was like a person that, you know, those things don't shake me. I just feel like I could walk on those things until this happens to me. You understand me? But I'm saying this to say this. In the midst of everything, no matter what you go through in life, God is right there. You just have to believe. It doesn't matter if you're a Christian or you're a sinner. No matter who you is, so long as you have life in your body, seek God and, and don't wait until things happen. Always make sure that you have a relationship with God. Yes, and a couple moments after they hold the fire by me, we was there talking and she walked downstairs to one of the neighbor's house and uh, they were there playing with um children was there playing until i hear the children screaming fire when they take a stock one of the man downstairs said he that catch a fire and they had to put it through a window push it through a window through it over, over the gully right yeah and my stepdaughter she's alive she's okay and i don't want her feeling some type of way me bringing out this story but sometimes you know things like these the world need to know about it you understand me the world really need to know that these things happen happen to people and people could actually speak and say yes and and other people could verify it and say yes you understand me i don't want to say this in a bad way to let you feel no type of way you know my children yeah but we all got to understand you understand me so me and her still have a close relationship and so forth you know yeah because she she's just a victim you understand me i was scared when it just started but then i got a connection with god and like he said to me my child fear not i with you i is your strength ain't nothing gonna happen to you you see from that moment whenever time that fire light is like i feel an extra strength 
I start breaking things in the house. All of my figury, my glass, my this, my that, whatever it is, I catch, I just fling it straight in where the fire start burning. I angle it terrible. Churches started coming there. Um, you know, I gone to the police station. I, I gone to the police station. I had reported it to the police station because I didn't know what to do. My mother was a Christian. She was scared to come by me. People was scared. None of my friends them was scared to come by me because they was wondering what was going on. But some of them wasn't scared. They was saying, no man, we got to see this. We got to, you know? So I end up had to move from that house. When I was moving, I was so broke. And this is a touching part of the story. Every time I say this part, I feel some type of way. I didn't have no money. My baby daddy, he was working and he was working in the country at that time, I think. And with, I spend out, spend out, stressed out, spend out, plus pregnant. And uh, I pack up all the stuff in the house, all the stuff, you know, and uh, I start walking and I was walking past one house and I see some big trucks over there, big Leland trucks. And I press the buzzer and I see one guy run, come to the gate. I peeped through one in the hole and the guy said, mom, can I help you? And I said, who owned those trucks? And he said, the big man, him inside. So I say, tell him I have a problem. I need a truck. And he said to me, say, um, you okay? And I said, no, you know, I going through some stress and things. And I was starting to tell him. And he said, oh, you're the lady who live across there. I hear what's going on across there. And he called the man for me and the man come. And when the man come, I start telling the man, and I said, the man say, I'm gonna give you my passport to hold on to. I have some money in fixed deposit. I'm gonna give you my bank book to hold on to. And I'm gonna make sure that you get your money. And he said, you don't have to do all of that. He said, I'm gonna move you. And I said, okay. At that time, I was only seeing the man face. I ain't seen his whole entire body because I talking to him through a little hole by the gate. Then he said, okay, go home. I come in right now. And then I go home. When I was going through the gate, I reached right at the front part of the entrance. One lady was living across there, one whole lady. And she's saying, boy, everybody moving, leave me. And that part of the story touched me too again, you know. And I said, Lord, I can't move, leave this lady. I don't know her, but I can't move, leave her. She was whole. She was 68 at the time. And so the truck came and we moved in everything. But however, how I had gotten a place to move, I know a policeman. So I had called him and tell him about the situation. And he had a friend who had a friend who had a empty house. So that's how I get the house. And I move, me, my children, and the same lady, and we move. When we reach by the place now, when we reach by the place, the truck reverse back up and back up in the yard, close to the step. So the man come out the truck. When the man was coming out the truck, I see he swing down in a type of way, looking funny. So this is the part that I want to show you that God works in mysterious ways. When I look at the man good, the man only have one foot. And let me tell you, where we was moving from to where we was going, I was going up the hill. And that man draw some gear. And let me tell you something, my belly bottom cramp. I had to sit down on the step for like 20 minutes when I see that this man only have one hand and one foot. Who carry me there? Yes. So, however, we moved there. I feel like I was okay when I gone there. 
Anyhow, when I go on there, we sleep good the night. In the morning, <laughs> here comes trouble. In the morning, I start smelling something smell funny. Then, when I take a stock, I see smoke coming out one of the drawers in the room. So I was like, but oh, Jesus, so I call out to the lady now because I had given her the front room. And she said, what happened? And I said, Lord, it start again. And she said, what? What is this? I am 68 year old and I never experienced nothing like this in my life. What is this? And let me tell you something. I pulled them clothes from the drawer and I threw them outside and I said, take them. Yeah, days and days goes by. Just fire burning here and there, losing this, losing that. One of the most touching part again towards it is was one day one of my friends she came there to bring me some food and stuff and you know she bring me some money too and when she gone I was going by the shop when I ready I couldn't find no slippers that thing took all my shoes from the doorway to the closet I couldn't find no shoes I searched everywhere as a person of shoes and I start getting mad. I take up the cutlass and I start walking around the yard up and down, up and down until I stand up. And I was looking down in the gully and I saw something like a blue bag or something like that. And I gone down there. When I gone down there, all my shoes, my shoes and my pictures was down there. And my pictures, the head part of it was cut off and leave only the foot part of it all my pictures yeah and i take up my shoes and i go up and i go and i tell the lady and so forth and thing and i go through it for days again up until then i had um uh a Nissan Sentra two door and we started to run out of water so my baby daddy instructed one of his friends to come get a car and get some water for us and when he come he said to me say boy I hear what's going on you know I think it was TVJ who came there or CVM one of those um thing uh, came there with the Pope um came there one day not the Pope the Catholic priests, yeah, some priests came there too one day, and uh, you know, it as they gone, it start back. Whoever come as they gone, it start back. Yeah, so when the guy came, now he's saying, "Boy, I hear what's going on, and everybody be talking, and you know me, I say, yeah, man, I say, boy, a strong boy, you know. So yeah, I say, where I gonna run go? I can't run from myself, you know. I gotta fight this." And he said, boy, my mommy was talking about you this morning, you know, and she was saying that there's a man she know in Portmore. So I tell him, boy, this is the first time I go in some, some of these type of place, you know. So I tell him, say, yeah, tell her, say, me want to the man. And he said, all right, and he give me her number and we make an appointment to go to the man the next day. Okay, so we went by the man now. When I reach almost to the gate, the man says, stop, 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 stop. And he blasts two buckler rum. And then he said, if you walk back where you come in, and me walk back where you come in, run around like a fish tank and some pretty, pretty something. And anyways, now, we have a ball, the crystal ball, the round thing. Yeah, and it's kind of heavy. And he said, if it open out my hand, I open out my hand, I put it, and he put it in my hand. When he put it in my hand, I pay fire, I see night. He said, Jesus. Um. And he said, give me 10 minutes. He said, go back outside, and I will go back outside. 
I will give him the 10 give minutes. Give him the 10 minutes and then he came back to us by the gate and he said, listen to me. He said, miss, I can't charge you for this work, you know. God said, I have to help you. He is an innocent person, kind and loving. Help plenty of people. He said, I can't take dollar from you. But here what happened. I can't help you from here, so you have to go home. I come into your house six o'clock in the morning. I say, okay. And I left. Six o'clock in the morning, when I wake up and peep through the window, I see the car out there. I pull the door. I gone out there. He said to me, um, here is a list. And he gave me like, I think it was about $5,000. I don't remember the amount of money he gave me, but he gave me a list and he said, go in the market in, in Lensdale and buy these stuff. And however I gone in the market and I buy the stuff them and I come back and he said, everybody must stay outside the house. And he was in the house. Couple rooms where we have one, two, three, four rooms, five rooms, including kitchen and bathroom. And However, we was there waiting on him, waiting on him, waiting on him. We had to cook outside, eat outside, you know, spread up bed under the tree and stuff. When the man was leaving, he said, everybody has to go. He said, nobody can sleep here tonight because the Lord instructed him to send back the fire where it was coming from. However... I called my mother. She said, I don't want to get burned up. I called somebody else. And it was like, boy, I can't do it. I can't do it. Everybody was telling me I can't. This particular friend, I called her. And she said, come with the whole way burn up. And I said, OK. And the lady. I had let she stayed with one of my friends for that night and I gone with my children by my friend and I bring home by the little girl about three days after that Friday Saturday Sunday we wake up in the morning I was still by my friend we wake up in the morning because I didn't see her in a long time, so it was like a reunion plus a bag of talking and whatever, whatever. You all know how it goes. And when I gone there, no, okay. I reached on the third day, no, while I was there. I only see a lot of fire brigades pass in the house. So we was wondering, what going on? So then my baby daddy called me and said, they said I send fire back in their place. And... The place burning down and all the friends saw that stuff so i called back the police and i tell the police where i was and the policeman say okay i come in and talk to you and i say all right and when the policeman come the policeman say a lot of things was going on in there but it was terrible it was more terrible than what was going on by me because what was going on by me is does like clothes burning and you know vanity stuff and you know things disappearing and all of that but what was going on by them is like place was burning literally down i heard of i think it was a pastor who gone there and his pants caught on fire too and it, it was a lot of things that was going on there so the policeman said to me say all right then since that man get the fire off of you i am to call the man and let the same people them link up with the man to find out what's really going on okay when i called the man now in front of the police and everybody the man said i was waiting on you to call but tell them peoples i can't help them they got to go and do what they had done so this is my story and how God has saved me through this and 
God has given me the strength through this. He gave me a superwoman strength. Yeah. And that was 18 years ago. Give God thanks for life. Yes, so I was talking to a friend of mine the other day and she sort of remind me about the story and she said, um, why you don't tell the world this story? People need to hear these things, you know. After all what's going on now in, in, in Jamaica. And she said, if you need to do a movie, you know. But um, I just want to say this to Jamaicans. You all need to have a close relationship with God and stop joking. Because this thing happened to me 18 years ago. And now I can actually see things happening more. Even the young people, they be losing their mind. They go into these Hopia peoples and they doing all different sorts of stuff. Um, young people, draw close to God. Whole people, draw close to God. Medium-sized people, draw close to God. Because it's only God alone who can save us through this what is going on now i even hear an artist the other day be singing a song say when in reading ghana i hope your man so it's like people ain't keeping no connections with god nowadays people be drawing close to the devil swallowing up themselves understand me so i beg my fellow jamaicans i beg them please please there is a god teach your children about god teach them how to pray teach them how to love please it's gonna get worse it's not gonna it's getting worse and worse every day young man out oh there you all need to stop look and listen please find something positive to do with your life you're all killing off yourself you're killing off your neighbor children dying satan taking you all over you're all dying stop god is watching us god is watching us the creator the man who create heaven and earth the man who create us all the god of us all he is watching stop wasting your life wow anyway guys when you hear it i think it was also it, i think she tell me say it come from cvm and couple um newspaper did have it out when it did come out so i guess yeah man, she have our proof and witness. But I may I tell her, sometimes some things happen, I just, what you believe and, I don't know. As I said, there are always other forces out there, you know. I try to compete with us, but to God be the glory, great things he has done. Thanks for watching. Big up on yourself, can't share the story, I'm out.